Go ask Alice. January 7th. Last night's dinner was excruciating. Alex loves her new school and her new little friend, Tricia. Tim rode the bus with the neighbor boy and was in three of his classes. He said the girls were cuter than the ones at his old school, and he said they fell all over him, but that's the way it always is when a new boy moves in. Mom went to a tea and found everyone charming, beautiful, and pleasant. Isn't that nice? Well, like oil and water, I can't quite adapt or fit. Every so often, I even seem to be on the outside, just looking in on my own family. How can I possibly be such a dud when I come from this gregarious, friendly, elastic background? Gramps was in politics, and he was always the favored candidate, with Gran traveling by his side. So what is it with me? Am I some kind of throwback, a misfit, a mistake? January 14th. A whole week has gone by and no one has done more than stare at me in a kind of curious, hostile, what are you doing here kind of way. I've tried to bury myself in books and my studies and my music and pretend I don't care. I guess I don't really care. And besides, what difference could it possibly make if I did? I've gained five pounds and I don't care about that either. Mother is worried about me and I know because I've become so quiet. But what is there to talk about? If I went by her standing rule of, if you can't say something nice about things, don't say anything at all, I never even open my mouth except to eat, and I've been doing plenty of that. February 8th. Well, I've gained almost 15 pounds since we've been here. My face is a mess, and my hair is so stringy and oily, I'd have to wash it every night to keep it decent. Dad is never home, and Mom is on my back all the time. Be happy, put up your hair, be positive, smile, show some spirit, be friendly. And if they tell me I'm acting negatively and immaturely one more time, I'm going to gag. I can't wear any of the clothes I made before I came here, and I know Tim is ashamed of me. When I'm around his friends, he treats me like a dum-dum, insults me, and makes remarks about my hippie hair. I'm getting fed up to here with this town and school in general and my family and myself in particular. March 18th. Well, I finally found a friend at school. She's as cloddy and misfitting as I am. But I guess that old poke about birds of a feather is true. One night, Gerda came to pick me up for the movies, and my folks were everything but rude to her. Imagine my long-suffering, sweet-mouthed mother being tempted to utter a slimy phrase about my drab-looking nobody friend. I wonder why she doesn't take a second look at her drab-looking nobody daughter, or would that be too much for the well-groomed, thin, charming wife of the great professor who might be the president of the school within a few years? I could see them all squirming a little, even as I have been squirming ever since we got to this impregnable hole. April 10th. Oh, happiness and joy and elation. Mother has promised me that I can spend the summer at Grand's. I start on a diet as of today, this very minute. Of course, she had one little string attached to it, as she always does, that I get my grades back up. April 20th. School is almost over. Two more months and I can hardly wait. Tim is intolerable and mother is constantly, constantly picking at me. Don't do this. Don't do that. Do, do this. Do, do that. Why don't you? Do you know you should? Now you're acting childish and immature again. I know she is always comparing me to Tim and Alexandria, and I just simply can't measure up. It seems like every family has to have one goon. Guess who's it on this homestead? It's natural to have a little sibling rivalry, but ours is getting way out of control. I really do love Tim and Alex, but they've got plenty of faults too, and I find it difficult to decide whether I love them more than I hate them or whether I hate them more than I love them. This also applies to mom and dad. But truthfully, I guess it applies even more to myself. May 5th. Every single teacher I have this term is an idiot and and a drag. I read once that a person is lucky to have two good teachers who stimulate and motivate him in his whole lifetime. I guess I must have had my two in kindergarten and first grade, right? May 13th. I met another girl walking home from school. She lives just three blocks from us and her name is Beth Baum. 
She's really awfully nice. She's kind of shy, too, and prefers books to people just as I do. Her father is a doctor and away from home most of the time, just like dad. And her mother nags a lot, but then I guess all mothers do. If they didn't, I'd hate to see what homes and yards and even the world would look like. Oh, I do hope I won't have to be a nagging mother, but I guess I'll have to be. Else, I don't see how anything will ever be accomplished. May 19th. Today I went home with Beth after school. They have a lovely house and a full-time live-in maid. Beth is Jewish. I've never really had a Jewish friend before, and for some reason I thought they'd be different. I don't know how, because we're all people, but I just thought they'd be. Well, more like, as usual, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Beth is really conscientious and worries about her grades, so we did some work and then listened to records and drank no-calorie Cokes. She's trying to lose weight, too. I really like her, and it's nice to have a true friend, for confidentially, I didn't really ever feel secure with Gerda. I always wanted to correct her grammar and tell her to watch her clothes and her posture. I guess I'm more like mom than I thought. It's not that I'm a snob, really it's not, but real friendship can't be built on sympathy and a hanging on to someone just to keep from drowning. It has to be built on mutual likes and abilities and, yes, even backgrounds. Boy, mom would be proud of my thinking and attitude today. It's just too bad we can't communicate anymore. I remember being able to talk to her when I was little, but it's as though we speak a different language now, and the meanings just don't come across the right way. She means something, and I take it another way, or she says something, and I think she's trying to correct me or uplift me or preach at me, and I really suspect she's doing that at all. She isn't doing that at all. Just groping and being as lost with words as, I, as am I. That's life, I guess. May 22nd. Beth came over to my house to study today, and mom and dad and both the kids like her. They even asked her to call and get permission to stay for dinner. And then mom is going to take us downtown shopping since it's Thursday night and the stores are all open. I ran in to change clothes. And Beth ran over to grab her things. We'll pick her up on the way, but I just had to stop and jot the whole ecstatic experience down. It's just too tremendous and delightful and wonderful to keep all bottled up inside. May 24th. Beth is a wonderful friend. I guess she's the only best friend I've had since I was a very little girl. We can talk about anything. We even talk a lot about religion. The Jewish Hebrew faith is a lot different than ours. They have their meetings on Saturday and they are still looking for Christ or the Messiah to come. Beth loves her grandparents a lot, and she wants me to meet them. She says they are orthodox and eat meat off one set of plates and milk things off another set of plates. I wish I knew more about my own religion so I could tell Beth. June 3rd. Today, Beth and I talked about sex. Her grandmother told her that when a Jewish boy and a girl are getting married, if someone says the girl isn't a virgin and they can prove it, the boy doesn't even have to marry her. We wondered exactly how they proved such a thing, but neither one of us really know. She said she'd rather ask her grandmother than her mother, but I'd rather ask my mother if I were to ask anyone, which of course I won't, and my mother wouldn't know about Jewish customs anyway. Beth says she has nightmares about walking down the aisle, wearing a long, beautiful white gown, with hundreds of people at her wedding and someone whispering to the rabbi that she's not a virgin and the boy turning around and leaving her. I don't blame her. I feel the same, the very same way. Someday, when she gets up enough nerve, she's going to ask her grandmother or somebody about it. I hope she'll tell me because I really want to know too. June 10. Dear Diary, school will soon be over and now I don't want it to end. Beth and I are having such a good time. Neither one of us are very popular with the boys, but sometimes Beth has to go out with the Jewish sons of her mother's friends. She says it's usually a big bore, and the boys don't like her any more than she likes them. But Jewish families are like that. They want their kids to marry other Jewish kids. Some night, Beth is going to fix me up on a blind date with a nice Jewish boy, to quote her mother. Beth says he'll love it because I'm not Jewish, and he'll feel he's putting something over on his mother. I think I like him already. <laughs>